بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از دا ففتھ ویک آف یور منی بینکنگ اینڈ فائنانس کورس ٹوڈے ویل ڈسکس ڈفرینٹ فارمز آف بینک ایڈوانسز ایز وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ اے بینک سو بینک از این انسٹیٹیوشن دیٹ کلیکٹ فنڈس فرام دا پیپل ہو ہیو ایکسیس فنڈ اینڈ لینڈ اٹ ٹو دا پیپل ہو وانٹ دیز فنڈس فار سیف اینڈ پروفیٹیبل انویسٹمنٹس Uh, there are different type of bank advances and, uh, and different type of um, uh, financial instruments provided by banks uh, in a form of advances. So we will discuss these uh, different types of bank advances in detail in the next slides. Uh, first uh, form of bank advance is bank overdraft. Um, actually, when we talk about bank overdraft, uh, so it is actually a kind of an arrangement in which a person who had already an account with the bank and he is doing business and uh, he needs some funds from uh, and funds uh, for a shorter period of time, so they can request a bank uh, for the bank that they could provide them uh, an overdraft facility on their account. And in this case, they can withdraw their funds um, from their uh, already um, uh, operating accounts uh, and they. will give them a limit and the, the interest is charged on daily basis uh, and now when we talk about this bank overdraft it's an informal uh, formal way of borrowing from commercial bank and uh, as i have already said that it is a uh, it is uh, it is a borrowing uh, for shorter period of time and it will help you um, when you uh, in your revenue expenses in it will help you in your working capital requirements and um, in, in certain times when the company needs a payment of its bill monthly bill salaries or utility bill or uh, mostly a uh, purchase of inventories and it is an actually an agreed limit will be, um, which can which is sanctioned to the a person who has already uh, operating in account with that bank uh, like that current account and um, the mark markup or the interest will be charged per day only for the utilized amount by uh, current account holders uh, obviously Uh, the, uh, the the interest is um, charged on daily basis and they will monitor the, uh, daily monitor the uh, the remaining balance and based on that they will uh, charge interest on daily basis as this is an, uh, an arrangement with the bank and the person don't have to um, uh, to operate another account for any kind of loan so there are many advantages associated with uh, bank overdraft facility because um, in any case when in the when the uh, businessman needs money like for for example for a shorter period of time so it would be a very great arrangement or and it will uh, fulfill its uh, working capital requirements and whenever a business needs money and the don't have to take my have to go for uh, lengthy um, loan procedures they can just request to the bank and if he is a good uh, account holder he has passed previous good uh, credit record or credibility so they will uh, obviously provide you this pay, uh, this facility and um, another thing is that uh, interest is charged only on the borrowed amount so they don't have to pay um, extra interest uh, and they, they, they only pay interest on the amount they have used from their uh, Um, from their account and obviously it's a running balance uh, it, it's a running balance account you are using this account for a longer period of time and um, you can um, only pay for the amount uh, which you have used and at any time if you think uh, that at the end of the day you have excess money so you can uh, put it back on the uh, on in your account and save certain amount of interest there are uh, certain disadvantages associated with bank overdraft facility uh, first of all um, the bank overdraft facility is costier than uh, a conventional loan like uh, because the interest is charged on daily basis and as compared to the the loan this interest become higher and overall when you look into the uh, look into the aggregate amount the uh, interest paid to the overdraft facility is higher than the um, the uh, interest paid on a conventional uh, conventional loan 
secondly um, uh, uh, bank can ask you to ask to pay back you the amount of money uh, at any time if it is not being specified in terms and conditions if it is uh, specified in terms and conditions so that then that it's not a problem but if it's not specified in the terms and condition that um, uh, that they can uh, they cannot call back the entire amount and a certain time if you have not fulfilled uh, the terms and conditions or certain um uh, obligation uh, which uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, fulfill so in that case bank can ask you to repay the whole amount or at certain time um, it might be possible that bank can change their policy at that time they can also call back the amount as well so in that case it becomes a problem for a businessman to pay the whole amount at once of, uh, from uh, recall from the bank and third one uh, problem is that if when you are mm, asking bank or draft facility from your bank so as bank has its own risk management procedures so they can ask you to put a certain security as a pledge or as a um, as a uh, as a secure as a security in order to secure their um, uh, their um, their amount they are paying you uh, and you can put a certain business asset as a security in the bank which put them at risk if you cannot meet a repayment requirement because a bank is doing Uh, business or bank is uh, providing you uh, providing you loan because they are also in a business they can earn their money with the, uh, with the interest paid by the uh, by its um, the uh, by its customers so if you are not fulfilling their requirements so uh, obviously you have to uh, your underlying asset who are are with the bank as a security would you can uh, put them at risk so that is also a very potential uh, disadvantage associated with bank overdraft facility now another form of bank advance is cash finance or we can also call it a cash credit and as compared to bank overdraft facility it's the arrangement uh, in which uh, the uh, the amount is provided for a longer to a uh, longer time period and uh, uh, it it can be provided to a business uh, which is being uh, which is uh, any or any other type of commercial or industrial or manufacturing concern and they uh, the uh, Uh, this advance is granted on pledging of security like over bank overdraft facility or um, um the or merchandise or tangible asset so um, and it is a contractual advance but operated through an account when we talk when we talk about bank overdraft facility so that is an arrangement in which uh, the uh, the person who has already in a, um, a current account with the bank so they can ask the amount of uh, credit or, or amount or amount a more amount uh, and a form of advance on their current account but in this case uh, this account is uh, operated separately you have to open a separate account uh, for this cash finance facility so and and markup is charged on amount actually drawn just like bank overdraft facility uh, the markup is also charged on actual amount of, uh, withdrawn and uh, the, in the cash uh, finance facility you have to put a certain uh, lim- a certain amount of money in your account in a form of compensating balance as well so bank will provide you a, a cash line and you can borrow uh, that amounts for uh, the that um, up, uh, you can borrow up to the up till that amount but you have to put certain amount of minimum amount of balance in your account that is called as compensating balance um precautions in cash finance uh, advances uh, as bank provide this cash finance to its customer Uh, and obviously they are giving that amount for uh, earning uh, in a in earning profit because their main uh, source of profit is through lending people at higher interest rate so uh, it's very important that whenever the bank is providing cash finance facility to its customer so they could fulfill all their risk management procedures and they have to see that what the type of uh, precaution they could sh- could take while um, providing cash finance facility to its customer so these are some of the suggestions for the bank in order to uh, take uh, certain precautions before providing uh, cash finance facility to its customer first of all a customer should be honest and trustworthy as it's uh, 
it this is something very much important for every person uh, to whom you are lending money because uh, if the person is not uh, not honest or trustworthy he will never pay you back that amount of money so um, a, a bank could uh, go and find his criminal record or its uh, credit card card um, history or uh, or it can go through its credit worthiness or credit uh, credibility of that person and uh, obviously the bank should be uh, familiar with different types of market as well uh, and because uh, they have to uh, they, they should know that what amount of uh, returns and what amount of interest is are being charged in different markets so they should also uh, be there with the competitive terms then uh, they should provide credit on readily saleable commodities because certain commodities are are being uh, uh, pledged in with the bank so if that these commodity are actually uh, not resellable so that will uh, create problems for the uh, for the bank or the people who are lending money then possession of adi um, uh, um, adequate uh, possessions uh, provisions of adequate um, warehouse facility obviously uh, when you uh, have um, taken certain um, uh, commodities and they have you have to ta uh, take over that commodity so you have to put these commodities into a proper warehouse uh, because uh, the possession is uh, the because uh, you have to put them in a, on a safe um, uh, safe place uh, if they they are perishable commodities so that uh, need more protection section as well and so uh, you should have an adequate uh, warehouse facility then uh, you should take possession of the good before providing uh, this cash finance facility to the uh, to you to your customer uh, and a storing of the goods in bankers warehouses that's also very much important because uh, um, if they they are they if these goods are in the bankers custody so it would be the banker banks would be on a safe side then um, if the commodities have stable markets then these commodities are a, are a good security if they have an, uh, their market is unstable so that create problem then uh, you should proper evaluate each and every com uh, commodity and in each and every uh, item which is provided for uh, pledging or for mortgage before uh, providing loan or before granting cash, cash finance facility then uh, the insurance of uh, goods pledge is very much important because in case of any unforeseen situation or an, any any uh, other kind of emergency uh, the uh, the bank should bank should be on a safe side as we have discussed a bank overdraft facility and cash credit uh, so there are certain differences between overdraft facility and cash uh, credit first of all um, overdraft facility is provided for a shorter period of time or for a temporary uh, it is a temporary arrangement whereas when we talk about cash credit uh, so these are advances which are provided for a longer time period and they can be uh, they uh, they can be um, uh, used for uh, purchasing capital goods or for a uh, for uh, for uh, purchasing certain machinery or any other things uh, and over overdraft facilities can be availed on current account whereas cash credit needs uh, opening a separate account and when we uh, look at the aggregate markup or aggregate interest so markup is lower on overdraft uh, whereas when we talk about cash credit so uh, we have to pay a higher markup on uh, cash com uh, cash credit as compared to bank overdraft facility so we can say that overdraft facility is a temporary requirement and it can be open on a, a current account and it has a lower markup rate uh, as compared to cash finance facility but on the other hand when we talk about cash credit so it's a long term arrangement or it provide finances for a longer time period and it if you want to avail a cash credit you have to open a separate account and that facility would be provided on that separate account and as compared to bank overdraft facility you have to pay higher interest rate on a cash credit uh, as a uh, uh, cash credit now the third form of bank advance is bank loan and it's the term commonly used in our um, business uh, business studies and, and many other uh, activities so um, uh, when we talk about bank loan so this is the amount which is, which is being provided or sanctioned sanction mean approved for, and it's a for a fixed time period 
and it's a secured and clean loan because you have provided a you have signed a proper agreement and you have provided a proper uh, security for this kind of loan and um, and it is actually an arrangement in which um, the uh, time period is fixed and uh, the interest rate is also fixed so it is a sanction for a pre arranged period at an agreed interest rate and as as um, we have said that when you want to avail cash finance facility you have to uh, open a separate account so bank loan is also provided on a separate amount but in a case of cash finance uh, you can uh, uh, you can take certain amount of money and put certain amount of money back in your account and the interest is charged on a borrowed amount but in the case of a bank loan uh, you have you can take out the whole amount and you can full take a full amount because uh, they can charge you interest on a whole amount and the interest charges are ch uh, charged from the date the loan is transferred uh, and uh, as compared to cash finance facility this uh, the, this kind this is the the is the kind of arrangement in which uh, the bank provided you with a certain amount of money with pre arranged a uh, time period and pre um, pre arranged pre uh, and uh, an agreed interest rate and the date of the interest will start when the amount is transferred uh, into your account now there are different types of loan first of all uh, demand loan uh, a demand loan is a loan arrangement in which a bank can require to uh, the uh, repay a full amount uh, repay a full amount of money which is being uh, um, lended uh, at any time uh, and uh, this condition has already been discussed by, by the uh, borrower and uh, they can uh, uh, because at the very start when they are making arrangement or they are uh, entering into the into the contract so it is being uh, identified or it is being uh, declared by the uh, lender that they can call back this amount anytime secondly we have fixed loans uh, fixed loans are uh, the loan uh, which can be uh, repaid in fixed installments and uh, the term and conditions of the interest rates are uh, provided then the third type of loan is consortium loan a consortium loan consortium loan is a kind of uh, arrangement in which uh, in, uh, different banks are in, involved at certain time we have uh, larger projects for which you need finances and the bank don't want to sponsor the whole amount because the amount is very large so in that case many banks come many many financial institution come together and they form a consortium and provide uh, a, low, a portion of uh, the loan amount to that project so uh, uh, when we talk about consortium so consortium is usually governed by a legal contract that delegate responsibility among its members um, and um, obviously it's a finance facility uh, which in which uh, in the in the case when um, the transaction should not be uh, cannot be taken place with a single lender then then there is a bridge loan uh, when we talk about a bridge loan, so a bridge loan is a short term finances, a financing used until a person or company secures a permanent financing or removes an existing obligation. Um, and bridge, bridge loans are actually for a shorter time period, typically up to one year or less. Another form of bank advance is uh, discounting bill of exchange. It's a kind of in arrangement in which uh, the bank will uh, discount the, no the notes, notes receivable of the uh, its, its client or its customer because, because they need money uh, before the uh, maturity of that note or majority of that promissory note. In this case, uh, the bank will give them a discounted amount. Like they can pay them, pay, pay them uh, the, um, the less, pay them the amount of money which is lesser than the amount written on that. Uh, um, uh, uh, on that uh, negotiable instrument or that account receive no, no accounts or notes receivable so um, you can say that it's a short term profitable investment of banks because the bank can earn rebate on these um, uh, uh, on these discounting and uh, and debate is also an earning of the bank because they are providing money before the maturity and if the amount is matured they will uh, they will recover the full amount so the rebate would be profitable profit profit of the bank as a bill of exchange is a safe employment of funds because um, they have uh, they have taken the uh, note receivable or account receivable uh, which is authentic 
and they have to first scrutinize that and then after then accept that as a bill of exchange so that we can say that it's a safe employment of funds of the bank you know on which bank can earn uh, a certain amount of um, uh, rebate then uh, obviously it's a certainty of payment because it's a written promise or it's a promise uh, and uh, your uh, the, the the account receivable is authentic uh, or notes is, uh, notes receivable authentic uh, so and obviously this account is all, all, also liquid because at any time uh, bank amount, bank also need money so they can um, uh, discount this bill of rediscount this bill of exchange with uh, state bank or central bank and also they are free from price price fluctuation because the actual amount which they recover would be written on the uh, on the uh, notes receivable then it's obviously a profitable earning because uh, bank is earning rebates on these uh, investment then uh, they have obviously they have facility of discounting with the uh, central bank uh, they have a double benefit because at one end uh, they are getting rebate on the other hand they have um, the liquidity the, uh, the liquidity of uh, the amount is still there and um, the liquidity of is still there so then we can say that it's a profitable investment of bank another aspect of your um, bank advances or loan is security because uh, securities are very much important we uh, over here we are not talking about um, uh, stocks or bonds we are uh, we are talking about those type of uh, goods or commodities or those kinds of uh, things which can be put under pledge or mortgage with the bank and for attaining loan so uh, we can say security is a right or interest in a property if you have a uh, uh, if you have a property or if you have a certain a thing uh, on which you have possession or you you, uh, you have uh you are of owner of that so you can say that they can you can put that security uh, as a pledge or as a mortgage with the bank and attain loan so bank also hold securities as a cover against advances obviously banks are there for make for doing business and they are, want to earn profit and they don't want to and their business is to lend money and to to uh, save uh, to attract money from the savers and uh, lend that money to the people who actually needs that funds for their businesses and other any other purposes so bank ha bank uh, is actually um, there to for a safe employment of fund so they can need securities or they can need the security as a coverage against these loans so, uh, and the uh, this these securities are those um, uh, things which can be converted into cash without much loss of value or, or uh, um, and rank higher like they have higher liquidity and the liquidity is higher as compared to other securities and um, um, bank uh, extend their uh, credit to their trusted customer against these security because bank will uh, they don't um, uh, uh, believe you or you can say do, don't trust you blindly they have they if you have a credit worthy customer still they need certain kind of security as a, a coverage against the advance they they provide you so the securities are those things which can put with the bank for attaining certain amount of advance or certain amount of uh, loans as uh, we in this slide we will discuss actually essentials of good security uh, it's very important for bank to provide um, uh, as a bank loan and have a coverage against those loan but uh, while uh, accepting security they see that they should see that uh, what certain characteristics should be present in certain things in order to become a good security so first thing is their marketability if that commodity or that thing which has been um, provided you as a security has a market value and it can be uh, easily sold so obviously it can serve as a good security then easy valuation uh, you can easily value that security um, the security like there are certain standards or certain things which can be there and with the help of that you can value that security uh, or it has a stable value like for example if you have a certain uh, um, uh, so, uh, certain commodities a certain thing which, with the, the value of which rapidly change so it cannot serve as a good security 
so uh, the, the the things which can put as a security should has a stable value it has a characteristic of storability like perishable item cannot be um, it cannot be serve as a good security uh, transportability is also very important that the banker can shift uh, that thing from one place to another and its so cost of supervision would not be high because if the cost of supervision is high so it will uh, it would be expensive expensive for uh, the bank to monitor that security uh, it has the durability it cannot perish with uh, uh, it should not be perished within a certain time period or uh, title of security should be clear like for example uh, if you are putting certain uh, property as a mortgage and provide it as a security so um, it has a clean title like if it is uh, in uh, it, its ownership is in your name so that's good but if you have certain other people joint owners are there so you can make it uh, very clear from and ask from each and every owners who are there and make your the title of security clear and um, inform those people who are uh, co-ownership with you on that security that you are putting that security under mortgage and the obviously uh, the security you, you are putting as a, as a thing which you are putting as a, uh, as a security should be free from liabilities like you have not uh, attained any kind any kind of mortgage before on that security and if it is a um, if that security is a um, is a bond or is a any other thing so it you will provide you high yield return you can earn a return on that securities as well so if all these things are present in a uh, in the, anything in which you have provided as a security so it can serve you as bank serve the bank as a good security and it can be uh, it can be safer for bank to provide loans on these type of the securities which possess all these characteristics now what is the distinction between bank overdraft and uh, bank loan First of all, as we have uh, studied that uh, bank overdraft facility is an informal borrowing. Like uh, you have already have a bank account with the bank and you can ask them to provide you uh, amount more than your uh, limit, more than your actual uh, amount present in your account. So that's actually an informal way of borrowing from the bank. But when we talk about bank loan, it's a formal borrowing and you can request um, uh, the loan from the bank and you have to provide all the legal documents and bank will provide you money for a fixed time period at a predetermined at a fixed time period, uh, period and at a, a fixed interest rate which is being decided then um, but in case of bank overdraft facility the interest is charged on the daily ba uh, da daily um, balance which is actually withdrawn from the uh, that account then a customer can overdraft uh, to a certain limit as agreed with the bank obviously then bank has provided you a certain limit so the bank customer can borrow up to that limit they can have uh, less than lesser than that or up to that limit but in the case of a um, bank loan it's for it is for a fixed time period and can be uh, can be pay, repaid after that or in periodic installment whatever the arrangement uh, is agreed uh, in the term and condition of the loan so um, in a case of bank and overdraft facility uh, the interest is charged on overdraft amount like i have like we have already discussed that uh, the interest is charged on the amount which is actually withdrawn from the account but in the case of a bank loan interest is charged on the whole amount um, they have already decided uh, the what amount should be lended and at what interest rate and at what time uh, for what time um, how much time period so in that case they have already decided that how much of interest would be charged on that bank loan and next uh, when money is paid back into the account the amount of um, overdraft is reduced like you are um, uh, putting back that amount in your account so obviously the overdraft amount would be declined and you don't have to pay a higher interest rate on that but in a bank loan money pay payment does not reduce this debt but if it is repaid in a periodic installment then the marker is charged on outstanding amount as well because uh, you are paying installment and in the installment like in um, in, a, in a, if you have um, um, discussed uh, amortization schedule so in the case of uh, periodic installment you are paying interest as well as the part of principal amount as well so in that case your interest would be charged on the remaining principal amount but 
all, all the arrangement are decided at the um, at when you are making contract with the contact contract with the bank so um, bank on the bank uh, overdraft facility the aggregate markup or interest you are paying on the uh, on this loan uh, or in the and advance is higher as compared to ba bank loans on a bank loan you are paying markup lower than the uh, overdraft facility and um, in uh, the bank overdraft facility will be provided for a shorter period of time and it will fulfill your shorter term needs if bank needs uh, if uh, the uh, businessmen need uh, funds for their working capital so you can use the bank overdraft facility but in case of bank loan uh, it fulfill money needs for a longer time period because it can because there are uh, the bank loan has different time duration you can uh, get loan for a one period for five year for 10 year for 30 years so uh, it can uh, fulfill all your needs um, mostly for a, if you need funds for a longer period uh, of time you can um, uh, avail a bank loan facility